So it was a little bit obvious when you've been watching my last few videos, kind of warned about this sort of thing. Q3, often pretty bad for crypto. Mt. Gox repayment starting in the start of July. Independence Day, maybe market closed, no liquidity. Opportunity, right? And as I say, no liquidity. It all kind of rhymes. So let's just crack on and get into this one, I think. Let's just have a minute silence for the economy in the UK. Um, let's be honest here. I don't want to talk too much about politics, but this, if you're in the UK, you'll probably know what this means in terms of labour. Not the best, certainly for capital gains tax in the future, potentially. Yeah, this could get very, very spicy. So, um, yeah, the interesting one will be obviously the end of the year with the US one. But let's get into the nitty gritty of, let me move my camera a little bit. There we go. Mark Gox, their distribution has started. Um, it's all been sent over. There's been addresses, been moved around, and people are said to be receiving said monies, right? We don't know what's going to happen, obviously, but $9 billion worth of BTC, roughly, give or take, will be sent around. And as I say, people will be tickle pink, really, thinking, oh my God, I've just like literally got some money back. Wow, I didn't expect this. The dynamic here is fear. Fear is huge here. And I talk about this a lot on my Patreon. Feel free to check out the links below. Fear is the biggest catalyst in any market. Like when people think something bad is going to happen, it usually does. Often you find that liquidations happen, and we'll talk about liquidations a bit. And when there's no liquidity, when the market is shut, and then you've got this out on news, and you've got Germany selling too, and it's like, oh my God, it's like, oh fuck. It kind of just become pretty obvious. So this in itself sounds bad, but in the grand scheme of things, when you zoom out, a 28% correction on Bitcoin is relatively normal. So going back to like my previous videos, I've talked about this. I know, hello, welcome to my little bit of a gloat. I do apologize, but a lot of comments I got on this video was like positive. I got some negative as well. I don't mind the trolls. People thought this was clickbait without watching the video. I talked very openly that it was not going to be an alt season in this quarter. Quarter three, it's probably very unlikely. There's too much going on. And it's kind of sort of showing that now. I know it's very, very, very early, but we've got to look at the facts here. I also talked about this and the history of Bitcoin in another video about the fake out, thinking Bitcoin's popped up a little bit. We're probably going to go lower here. We're in a downtrend. You know, Q3 data is rubbish. And I also mentioned the obvious amount Gox in Germany selling. It's like, it was all there. It was all there. And that's the problem we have with the market. Sentiment gets too cooked up in an own little bubble. But what we're going to get now, probably going to bounce, right? Why? Late shorters are going to find being in moves. And those moves will eventually fizzle out. And then eventually the bulls will step in and things will get very, very interesting. So let's talk about that liquidation side. We have had a lot of people's long positions in the liquidity zones fucking nuked, basically. Simple as that. They've been absolutely smashed. Now, this actually is one of the biggest events ever in terms of Bitcoin history. I think it was the second biggest. Somewhat explained, right? So a liquidation is essentially when people are going long or short and you are then liquidated from position because you cannot pay that margin, right? When you got a load of late longs, so imagine this, people would have been long at like $64,000, $65,000 or even higher on lower leverage. If their position's getting rattled out, it's just because of the way the market is. In that sense, if it's a long, when it goes low, you'll get liquidated. Likewise, the other way around. I think now we're going to have a lot of late shorters. People will be short on this at like $54,000, $55,000. When we start going towards that bounce period of $58,000, $60,000, those late shorters will get liquidated and it will create an even more of a squeeze and will go up even higher. So yeah, it's an interesting dynamic, I know, but people do get absolutely caught out and late shorters and late longs do get punished the first. Well, first and foremost, most anyways, very, very simply. Another bit of news, which is very, very interesting, and I've talked about this before with Germany selling, and they've been selling for the last couple of weeks, we've been talking about it, but there's been a member of parliament here who's been saying it isn't sensible and productive to sell this, as it could be used to diversify tre treasury assets and protect against currency devaluation. Fucking, yeah. The UK has Bitcoin, the US has Bitcoin, Germany had had Bitcoin, but they are selling Bitcoin actively. There's other countries out there that do get Bitcoin from certain, you know, procedures of crime, whatever it may be, and they keep it. But they are actively selling it. 
yeah, it creates fear in a headline, but this might be like the Gordon Brown moment where he sold gold at really low levels in the UK. Yeah, this could be fun. So going back to history, and I've talked about this in previous videos in terms of how poor Q3 actually is. You can see in the data here how poor it is. And this is kind of normal. And in a good sense, it removes the left translated cycle kind of argument quite massively. The same with Ethereum, pretty naff. We have got an Ethereum ETF coming out very soon. It might not even move the needle until Q4. So it feels like holiday season. It feels like Goblin Town. I've got a holiday coming up. I've got weddings to pay for now. I've got all kinds of random stuff. It's time to kind of relax a little bit and hold station. But I will say this, there's genuine opportunities here. We will go through the technical analysis bit, but I want to go through something very much fundamental soon. But I think people are missing the point here. Now, this is a research paper that was discussed on Learning Crypto live stream this morning. Again, links below. They will be a very nice summer discount coming up very soon, just saying. But these are four obvious things for research, right? Tokenomics, valuation, the product and the people, right? The, the, very, very simple. This is all from Binance. Now, vesting periods, token emissions, full dilution value is it overvalued, undervalued, whatever. Obviously, what they've got product wise and obviously the people. We are looking at altcoins now. We're looking at Bitcoin now. We're looking at Ethereum now. We're looking at Bitcoin miners potentially. All 30, 40, 50, 60 percent lower than what they were three, four months ago. Has anything changed? On the most part, no. Just sentiment's changed, right? Sentiment has changed. Now I know you're gonna look at my thumbnail and my title and go, mm, bit bearish, isn't it? Bit of fear. But this is where opportunity is. You should be selling when people are euphoric. You should be buying when people are fearful. And when you marry up this for investors that the fundamentals matter, it does. The last thing you want to look at, and I know this is going to sound counterproductive, is the price. You get rattled out of things. Look at when Solana launched. Solana launched and it did nothing for a while. It went up to $4 and then it crashed right down to $1.20. How many people did not buy that? I didn't. I didn't even notice it. But people would have been buying that on launch going, this is amazing. It goes up. It crashes, a lot of value, and then it goes up to the moon. Entangle, an asset I'm in, has done a similar sort of thing. Gone up, it's gone down. It's still new. It's still very much squeaky new. Still got brand new slick ties on. It might totally, totally change. It needs time. This is why I say to people, don't buy those big new assets because you've got token emissions. Wait for them to kind of develop out a bit. So the most important thing we need to look at, and today's data is going to be shit anyways, but t next week is... How are the boomers going to respond to this price action? The ETFs on Bitcoin, what's going to happen here? So we need to talk about this. For obvious reasons, yes, it's been a, an okay-ish week on the most part, but they've never really had this big of a correction. As I say, Bitcoin's down 28%. Are they going to hodl? If these are traditional market buyers, probably, yeah. So here is some technical analysis from this morning. A little bit of a squiggle. This could be a whole new range here. We're falling into this region and we could actually bounce up to 60K again, or we can go bounce back down to here again. We can consolidate at the bottoms or consolidate at the, bot uh, at the top. That is a potential new range. Now, when we look at the overall picture, and if you follow me on X, you'll know that I pinned it. I've talked about this kind of structure and where we are going to correct to, and we already retest a little bit, and the next leg potentially up. But time frame is a key thing here. We don't know how long this is going to last for. Technical analysis is all about probability. You've got buyers, you've got sellers, right? You've got invalidations, you've got, you know, convictions, whatever it may be, depending on whatever you're looking at. The one thing we cannot predict is time. What's going to happen at a given time? What we can look at in terms of the technicals is the obvious. We are in a bearish structure. We have went down and corrected. Now, when you look at the overall bigger picture, we are actually looking relatively okay on some time frames versus others. The weekly time frame, yes, looks a bit ugly, but ultimately we're still doing okay versus the start of the year, just kind of a given on Bitcoin especially. So that looks interesting, but the RSI isn't looking good. Might go lower, probably will go lower, but we also may well consolidate around this $53,000 level, which has also been a strong historic level of resistance slash support in the past. That's Bitcoin. Bitcoin isn't the main thing here. Ethereum looks like a dog's dinner. Put this on my Twitter the other day, talking about we're probably going to go down into this kind of box. Um, we went right the way through the box like wet paper. 
it happens, but the structure is bearish. It's telling us that this is the structure bearish. Swing high, swing low, into a bounce towards 618, looking relatively weak. Structure is going, and then obviously off a cliff. This is a level of support. It's kind of found levels in and around this region, found liquidity, it bounced back up. That's the problem. If you've got a trading situation where you're liking to follow the market as a positional holder, you can go long or short, you may well find a lot of sentiment-based kind of data that will kind of back you up and go, yeah, I can probably hold this for a bit. And then you kind of get your rewards for it. The problem is the time in which it takes to do so. So you've got to be somewhat mindful of that. But yeah, Ethereum has corrected pretty aggressively. Now, in terms of the total market cap, we are below $1 trillion. We, uh, yeah, oh, yeah, uh, no, $2 trillion, sorry. Well, that's all bollocks anyways, that inflationary measure. But when you look at the overall picture, it's still, yeah, bearish structure. This is a proper correction. This is a proper lower high into a lower low. We will find a level of support, in my opinion, at certain levels, and we'll start to kind of consolidate. It's just the way it is. We all know the market cycles talked about in my last video. We've got accumulation, markup, distribution, markdown. We may well have had the accumulation down here, the markup, the distribution, and now we're on the markdown period. We will eventually find a level of support and we will consolidate. But ultimately, we're still at the start of the cycle. I've talked about it before, 100 days from halving. I know it's boring for some people, but we are often lower than what Bitcoin price is. It's just the way it is. These 30, 40% corrections on altcoins, normal. This 20 to 25, 30% correction on Bitcoin, relatively normal. It's just the way it is. Now, some people are calling for Bitcoin dominance to go higher. I'm not saying high, high. I'm just saying it might well just go to these level highs again. Altcoins aren't doing as bad. Solana is actually up today. Okay. Some of the BTC pairs of what I'm tracking, Polkadot up, Solana, Stacks. These are not down massively. Ethereum money down 0.9%. Not too bad. Dominance, as you can see here. Okay. It's, it, in most cases, you probably expect dominance to just shoot. It hasn't. Dominance on some of these, as I say, has been doing well. Look at like Solana dominance. Okay. You know, absolutely mental, but it just shows you it's not just bleeding from one area, which is good. It's a mixture of all. Now, before I go on to looking at some altcoins, the S&P 500, often you find that with Bitcoin, it sources liquidity first, it's gone down. We may well find that ne next week, essentially, this could sell off and we are at all time high. So it kind of makes sense. Bearish divergences, maybe. Keep an eye on that one. Now, some altcoins. Chainlink, talked about this before. Looks like a good opportunity around this $10 mark. We're kind of going to go and readdress it. What about $8? Is that even possible? Potentially, yes. When there's fear in the market, people get scared. There's opportunities here. As I said to people on my live stream this morning on Learning Crypto, if you are looking at buying Chainlink at you know $20, why aren't you looking at $10? You know, why are you not picking up the phone now and getting some money somewhere and to buy something, right? It's just the way it's talked about before in my recent videos. I bought Bitcoin at $62,000, $63,000. It's a level of support. I don't mind taking the hit. I will buy more if it goes lower. Guess what's happened? It's gone lower. Guess what's happened? I bought more. I will do the same with stacks. I will do the same with other things as well if I think it's suitable to do so. BNB, look at this. $720 not too long ago. It's under $500 now. Polkadot, $12. Five. There's opportunities everywhere. Near protocol. Levels of support here. That looks like a really good solid buy area. Not financial advice, of course, but could melt lower. That $3.30 level on these high time frames could well look absolutely beautiful for a lot of people. Don't get greedy. Don't be silly about it. Just look at what the prices are giving you. It's crazy. There's loads of them. Cardano is another one. It was all the way at $80. At $80. <laughs> 80 cents. Now it's at like 34. Crazy numbers. So there we go. If you enjoy this content, leave a like. I do apologize if the market's crap. If you arrived at the market brand new, you know, bushy-tailed, fresh-eyed, all kinds of malarkey stuff, you'd be gutted right now. You'd be like, where's Lam where's the Lambos? I mean, I'm looking at Injective on the screen, $18. What? Crazy. Opportunity. Ooh. Ooh.